CyberWork Hacks is here to answer your questions about the Security Plus exam. Today, InfoSec Bootcamp instructor Tommy Gober tells us about the new changes to the Security Plus exam and how it will or will not affect your study and preparation for the exam. Keep learning and keep it here for another CyberWork Hack. Hey, welcome to a new episode of CyberWork Hacks. The purpose of this spinoff of the popular CyberWork podcast is to take a single fundamental question and give you a quick, clear, and actionable solution to that problem, or a new insight or on how to use and utilize InfoSec products and training to achieve your work and career goals. Uh, today's guest, Tommy Gober, is an InfoSec instructor, and among his many areas of expertise, he is our boot camp instructor for one of the most popular and in-demand certifications. CompTIA's Security Plus certification. For today's CyberWork Hack, Tommy and I will break down some of the forthcoming changes to the Security Plus exam, and I'm looking forward to that. Thank you for joining me today, Tommy. Hey, Chris, good to be here. Thank you, it's good, good to have you. So Tommy, as we know, uh, the Security Plus exam has made some noteworthy changes in its new exam. Can you explain for our listeners some of the key ways that the exam will be changing this year? Yeah, so there's, things have been reordered uh, this, this go round. Okay. Um, there, uh, a lot of the terms have remained in place. Okay. There's a lot of the same concepts, but they have been reordered or even have a new approach to them. Okay. And so for, for that, what I mean is in the past, some of the, the concepts have really gotten out in the weeds. We really get real, mm. real technical and yep. in detail on some of this. And not everybody needs to know that. Right. Not everyone's going to necessarily be in a hands on kind of in the trenches um, technical uh, individual. They might be overseeing a uh, security project. And so they right. um, may not need to know the technical ins and outs of some of these. So it's it's more generalized on some of these concepts. I see. And then we also have some new technologies that have replaced old ones and, uh, you know, of note. WPA3 for wireless security okay. that gets included now. Um, up until now, it's been WPA2 has been the bee's knees. You know, WPA2 yeah, has yeah. been the solution for everything. Mm -hmm. But now we start to use WPA3. Um, we don't have to really get into the individual types of um, uh, it, encryption or ciphers that get used for crypto uh, for cryptography and whatnot. But um, so those are some of the things that have changed. Uh, other Topics that have that have other things that have been changed on the exam have been for the vocabulary. So some of the terms have been altered. It will it can actually throw somebody for a loop. If you are coming into this with some technical background already, you're like, okay, I, I know this stuff, let's do it. You will see some changes in vocabulary. For example, I just actually just saw this question this morning yeah. um, on the interwebs. Um, someone was confused about what the heck is an on-path attack? An on-path attack, that's a new way of describing what we have up until now referred to as a man in the middle. Got it. Okay. So it, yep. it, it could be confusing if you are coming into this knowing things like man in the middle. Yep. You got the concept. It's just what is CompTIA referring to it as now moving forward? And they've, they've uh, made some moves to be more inclusive with other topics. And so just it helps to know the vocabulary. Okay, so um, why do you think CompTIA decided to make these changes to this extremely popular entry certification? I'm, I, and I'm not speaking here specifically about uh, inclusive language, which makes sense, but like, you know, you you mentioned going from WPA2 to WPA3 and, and some of the other sort of tech upgrades. But, but what aspects of uh, the changing industry were they trying to address, do you think? Well, it, it's actually, it's it's nothing that they just, they didn't wake up one day and just be like, hey, we're going to pull the rug out from Let's all these people. completely change everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> sure. It's every three years, uh, mm -hmm. give or take, every three years roundabout that, that CompTIA reassesses. They they check in with a, a network of subject matter experts that they've got um, on hand. And they kind of, I would imagine they, they go through kind of a... Uh, uh, kind of pull the audience uh, sort of thing, a, a Delphi study, if you will. And right. they go through and figure out what are the the things that are happening in technology right now and mm -hmm. what things maybe didn't pan out from last time we did this. Right. And so they're they're going through and, um, you know, identifying things that have been deprecated 
and moving forward and saying, okay, this is the new standard. This is the way things are going now. Um, interesting too about WPA3 is that if you are following in the technology news and whatnot, there are some security concerns about WPA3. So hmm. shocker here. I know wow. wireless is not bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, sure. Of course. <laughs> but it's, it's, it, you know, it, that came out after. Yeah. Well, things were sold. We're going to we're going to be. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to. to. I mean, it's all, all the better for uh, for our, our security professionals of the future to know how to secure WPA3 here. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so if, for people who are currently studying for the security plus, but maybe not get scheduled to take the exam and maybe working sort of off old materials, do you need to change your study or learning strategy at all? No, I wouldn't. Um, you're you're good to go if you're if you're studying for the six hundred one, the the prior version. Mm -hmm. You have until July thirty first of, okay. of this year, so you still have you know six seven months to uh, to give it a go. If you have not begun yet, then you want to start with the seven hundred one. Um, you know, it depends on what your study habits are like. If you're going to be doing this on your own, if you're if you're joining us um, with InfoSec, you know, I think I have, I think I have one more six hundred one class that I'm doing. Okay, and then we're going to be launching into the seven hundred one. And really, it doesn't matter which version you take; it does not print on your credential. You know, yes, this Joker took the six. Yeah, over. yeah. Look at look at look at Mister uh, Old West here. Yeah, what's he doing? Yeah, they're not going to this antique certification. Like, you know, okay. Yeah, it's it's like any anyone that sees that you got the credential, they're not going to say, "Well, what version did you take? When did you take it?" Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, that's good. Um, so yeah, obviously, uh, Infosec uh, here is all about helping you pass your certifications exams with flying colors, and and Tommy can help you do that. But we also want to make sure that you retain that info and use it to level up your skills in your career. So, Tommy, what aspects of the information on the Security Plus exam would you say are most crucial to continue learning and practicing to keep your skills at the top of the heap? Oof, <laughs> that's a, that's a hefty one. Yeah, um, there's there's a lot, and um, there's we we talk about some of those concepts that are kind of over the horizon. Things mm -hmm. that you know we're looking ahead. What how are things shaping up between you know over, over the next month and the next year, et cetera? So we look at we look at those, um, but it's really up to the individual to look at where is their career trajectory taking them mm -hmm. because for security plus um and i and i i trust i, I trust that, that everyone here knows that um you know there is a it's a huge field cybersecurity and security plus doesn't cover everything but it also like i said earlier we don't get down in the weeds on some of these concepts so it's we're kind of getting a, a sampling a, along the way of all these different topics gotcha. on security plus so it's Security Plus is a, a mile wide and an inch deep. Right. That's, that's yeah. what can make it challenging for newcomers that are that are coming into coming to terms with all this content on the exam. You're like, holy smokes, right. how do I keep up with all this? It's because there's so much. It's expanding the breadth of cybersecurity. And I like to liken it to um, it's kind of like a buffet. It's like all right. these different topics and we're just going to explore all of it. Just get a little bit, of, try a little bit of everything. Exactly. And if you want, go back for seconds, go back for thirds, dive deeper on this one particular aspect because we talk about pen testing, but we don't go in depth on pen testing. If you want to go deeper in depth, come check out pen test plus certified ethical hacker. There you go. All the other topics there, but we just get a little smattering all along the way. We get a little bit of of governance. We get a little bit of mm -hmm. digital forensics, but we don't go in depth. So, yeah. where you're going to fit in um, at your workplace, that's that's what's going to really decide. You know, where you dive deeper. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Next. That makes sense. I, I was, I guess I was thinking in terms of sort of higher level things like CISSP where you're, you know, you're going to be hanging by the sort of, you know, seat of your pants the whole time and I remember everything, but what do I really need to remember? But yeah, this is, this, this makes more sense with the, with the sort of buffet metaphor in terms yeah. of like you're, you're given, you're given all these sort of like entrance ways and you have to decide which ones you want to sort of walk through at the next stage of your career, I suppose. But it's, but it's also fun too, right? Cause yeah. we, we get to try a bunch of different things that maybe right now the role that you are in or the, the role you're thinking about going for 
is down this one track, but you're like, wow, I never even knew that was a thing. Yeah. What about this? Sort of explain that. that could be fun. Uh, yeah. So um, Tommy, as someone who's taught hundreds of students over the years, what is your top piece of advice for studying for and taking the security plus exam? Uh, learn the terminology, the vocabulary. Okay. It's yeah. enormous. It's that's probably the biggest stumbling block. I think I that that anybody that has taken the exam will agree that there is so much vocabulary that's in there. Um, going through and looking at um, what are what's the terms that they're using? What's the what are they getting at when they're asking these questions? Um, what the heck are they asking? Yeah, uh, being able to go through and unpack uh, some of the um, acronyms that are in here. And then um, being able to, to sleuth all that out. So I, here's my my official answer to this one, Chris. Download the exam objectives. CompTIA makes this list of objectives and it just lists out, hey, these are all the things that are going to be on the exam. And that's what we do day one in the boot camp is we say, get these things, print them out. And I encourage folks, print these things out, keep a copy you know, on hand, and then go through and with a, a pen, check off things as you understand them. If you right. can describe what this bullet point is about to your cat, to your neighbor's fence post, <laughs> whatever, yep. you yep. know, put, put a line through it. And then if you don't understand it, skip it and move on. Do a, a real honest personal assessment of the, the content. And then once everything's checked off, guess what? You're ready to go. Love it. Almost as if they want you to pass. <laughs> no, no, uh, yeah, no, no barrier to entry, but, but our own. Yeah. So, uh, well, yeah. Tommy Gilbert, thank you for taking some of the mystery out of the new Security Plus exam. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Uh, and thank you all for watching this episode. If you enjoyed this video and felt it helped you, please share it with your colleagues, forums, and on your social media accounts. And definitely subscribe to our podcast feed and YouTube page. You can just type in CyberWork with InfoSec into any of them and you're on your way. There's plenty more to come, including several more Security Plus episodes with Tommy. Uh, and if you have any topics you want us to cover, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Until then, happy learning. Hey, if you're worried about choosing the right cybersecurity career, click here to see the 12 most in-demand cybersecurity roles. I ask experts working in the field how to get hired and how to do the work of these security roles so you can choose your study with confidence. I'll see you there.